So I graduated college with $97,000 in student loan debt. And I did the smartest thing I could think of, which was to buy a brand new car. So I'm living at home in my parents' basement uh, with my younger four siblings with like $115,000 in debt. And but so now like I'm not paying rent. I have student loans, but I can still manage. And but so I'm starting to actually save up and have money. And this is before I discovered minimalism. So I like like I said, I just go out and I just start buying the stuff. I buy a flat screen TV. I just mount it on the wall. I do all these things because I was deprived of that from my whole life. And I thought that doing those things would actually make me happy. And they did for like two weeks. <laughs> and then yeah, like it yeah. fades away. And then, oh, interesting. and then I came across minimalism. And for me, it was really more about this idea of success is because I actually came across Tom Shadyac, mm. um, who, yeah, he, he did I know it. exactly. Who he is. Yeah, dude, he did an interview with Carson Daly. Yeah. Uh, do you, yep. you know I, that one? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, dude, I saw that. It was at like 1 a.m. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. Dude, that's insane. I specifically had a, I, I specifically went to dinner and sat down with a friend of mine and like basically reenacted that whole interview no after way. I saw it because it was that powerful. I didn't, I hadn't seen the film. The film yeah. had not come out yet. Yeah. Like I was not. Dude, that's wild. That is wild. Yeah. That shook me. That's totally. what changed my life. Yeah. I, go, I was because I was running around. I was like, guys, yeah. guys, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. Yeah, totally. Like, he had everything and then he gave it up. And then yeah. now he lives in a trailer in Malibu. Yeah. And I thought it was the craziest idea in the world because it was mm. it was contrary to everything that I had been taught in my entire life was, mm. was that mm. like he had everything that I wanted. Mm. And so it gripped me and it, it got my attention. And then it started, it was just like the seed, right? Mm. So it wasn't everything. I didn't like become a minimalist there on the spot, but then it was a seed enough that when I started to read more about it online. I started to hear more about it. I was like, definitely like, this is mm. it. Like I, this is, this mm. connects with me. I had a name. It was called minimalism. So I was like, let's, let me just start to pare down my stuff. But it was, it's just funny how like those ideas, like you said, it's the window. It's powerful. That Carson Daly last call was a window for me to be able to, to open my mind up to this new idea. Well, and that's, and that, isn't that amazing too? Like one of the things that, 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 that stuff always inspires me because it makes me think I hadn't thought about that for a long time. Yeah. It makes me think how much we're all building on each other's work too. Isn't that incredible? Mm. That like you have an experience where you go do something and you you come back and you share it with us and then it 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 sticks like it imprints on other people and then when they go out to make their thing. I mean there there's so many parts of what I make or what I'm doing that are specifically pages out of someone else's book. You know what I mean? I'm like really and I try to do it thoughtfully, but like I'm also really not apologetic about it. I'm like, I learned that from that source right there. Mm -hmm. And I just think if I combine that idea with this idea, then there's a new thing. And that's gonna, you know what I mean? Like that's a, that's wild. But that's, I mean, honestly, that too, the other side of your question, like the the bigger system change idea, is that was one of the big things for me was when we were making the true cost, we were traveling all over the world, we were having this sort of out-of-body experience where we'd go back and forth between very rich parts of the world and very, very, very poor parts of the world, which as as simple as that sounds, that was a really new experience for me. And I think just the 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 contrast of that, like actually built up, like just even in my body, like it built up, like just to be in the same day, like on a fashion runway in Paris or Milan or London, and then to be in a slum, it, it that did something that I'm still still getting over honestly um but it also i remember as we were making the film we were having this experience and i would come home to the u.s and i remember thinking to myself i i, I th this whole this story that we're living in this system that we've created this profit at all costs this more and more and more and more and more buy 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 this whole thing not only is it in very real ways destroying parts of the world it's not making us happy and that that was like the most that was what kept me up at night the most is i remember just having this thought like it would be one thing if we were living in this really egregious like living off way more resources than we proportionally needed or you know all these things if it was making us really happy like if we were mm. the most put together <laughs> society in the world, if we were really whole and healthy as humans but I think to realize more and more that we were not, that we were living on like fumes of addiction and a really false narrative that was showing its faded colors and we were worn out and we were, I, that to me, that is really what started that, that truer search for like, what is the story that has led us to this place? And in uncovering that, some of what we go through in the film is just that process of pulling the layers back and being like, we're, we're living inside of a story that a lot of us have never questioned. And it is a story 
uh, certainly built on consumption, but it's also a story that does not have a good end. Like we're living in a system and you talk to, you know, I could have the, the, the best free market thinker in the world sitting here next to me, just, you know, markets are going to lead to, and I could ask that person, but what's the end game? Hmm. Like we're consuming, we're chewing up more and more and spitting out the remains where inequality is growing and growing. Like all these negative forces that we all agree on, we all can admit are increasing and, and not just increasing, but like exponentially beginning to increase. It just made me go back and kind of look at like, okay, how do we get here? Where are we? And then, yeah, how can we imagine a different story moving forward? And that's not like, I don't have the answer to that. I'm not trying to sit here saying like, but I think ever since that moment, that's kind of been the, that's been the, the driving force for a lot of my work is what are the actual stories we're telling? What are the narratives that are on loop and repeat? And what are the ones that are leading to things that are very good for human beings? And what are the ones that are really dangerous? And what are the ones that are like holding us back from the kind of world that we should and and maybe could have up ahead? Yeah. Sometimes I look at my own circles and the people I'm connected with and I get very optimistic because I'm like, because everybody that I know have heard of simple living or they, many of them are paring down themselves. So they're very connected with this idea uh, of being very thoughtful and intentional about the things they consume. Mm. They, I think inherently, many of them know that it's not going to make them happy. Some of them are still fighting with their own drives and urges to still get that, even though they know it's not going to make them happy. They're like, well, let me just find out for myself. But when you take a step back and you do look at, our entire society as a whole, uh, you know, it's it's hard to be entirely optimistic because we are still very consumer driven. Yeah. You know, every Christmas, every um, uh, Black Friday is like the big bigger than the one before it. Now Cyber Monday, and it's just becoming easy, especially with one click shopping. Like it's it's way too easy now to buy shit yeah. and cheap shit. So I, but I'm, I'm still like. I, optimistic i still think that we're we're heading towards the right path because like you said we are asking questions and we're telling stories that haven't ever been told before and Mm -hmm. i think that if enough people get connected with these ideas um we are inherently compassionate and there will be change i think we're starting to see the end of one story i mean i think that's the good news i mean someone wouldn't have made your film 10 years ago Mm. they just wouldn't so i don't even think they would have made it i mean it's just really interesting like we are in an accelerated, and I think that's what you're seeing. You're seeing one story slowly reveal itself to be something really awful and really ugly, and something that's not something that's not neutral. Like it's actually designed to do very specific things. It is designed to gather wealth for very specific parts of the the global community. It's 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 not just floating around, you know. Like we like this idea of. Uh, the market driven it's just as if we're all kind of is very specific like Steve Jobs had that great quote where he said you know look around you and everything you see was probably designed by people and some of it were not as smart as you so like mm. you can redesign it like you can and I think that's that's the like tension that we're living in is we're seeing the end of one story but we're not seeing the beginning of a new one yet and I think that's the thing that that's the thing that I think is gonna grab a lot more people is when we can transform from just I think what some of what we've been doing is like, hey, look at this thing. This is not good for you. Like, don't do not do that. Like, you know, get this out of your life. Like, that, you're addicted to this thing and like, you don't want to be. And, that, and all that's great. But I think the, the, the next step has to be, what is the new story? Like, people are, people are craving meaning. Like, you give someone a choice between an existence that is full of purpose and meaning and one that's not. And I think they'll choose the purpose and meaning path nine times out of ten. I just think we're living in a time where for a lot of people, they've grown up in a generation where they haven't seen that as an option. Like, mm. so they've just picked the least bad option. They've just picked like, I mean, even, even advertising is like designed to sell you on a narrative of something that means something like really like it is imitating mm. something so profoundly good about a hunger you have as a human being. It's just adulterating it into like a horrible place. And you wake up, like you're saying, you wake up two weeks later and it's like, it didn't do the thing that, it, but that. I don't know. I just think that speaks to the fact that people, by and large, are craving something more meaningful. They are craving something that is not just like, how do we like stave off the worst parts of what's coming for us as a human race? But like, couldn't we still design something better? Like, 
I mean, it's like that that moment in Truman Show where he's like, I want to be an explorer. And she's like, everything's already been explored. Like, I kind of feel like that sometimes where people are, it's like we're living at the end of history. It's like we did all these amazing things and put these systems together and they're serving us well. And I think now we're starting to get to a place where it's like, no, the Mm -hmm. systems aren't serving us well. The systems weren't designed to serve human beings well. They were designed to do very specific things. Those things have consequences. And to your point, you know, a film like yours can criticize those or can take a chip out of that. And now I think it's opening up like, okay, what's the story moving forward? 